My dad always spoke to me about the opportunity I had being at Tottenham to never take it for granted, but it's not until, you know, around 16, 17, 18, where you start to notice, hold on a second, I can, I can actually go all the way here. When you're young, you don't want to think about that too much. You want to just enjoy your football and be playing freely, you know, no pressure. Carl, great to see you. Uh, thanks for sitting down with us. Um, how we like to start these is to take you all the way back to where it all started for you. And if you can tap into the memory bank, uh, where did you first fall in love with football? Where did the game start for you? Um, good question. Um, my first club was Winchmore Hill. Um, so it's, yeah, North London, a uh, local club. My dad took me down there and, yeah, from there I just, you know, started to really get that competitive edge and uh, enjoyed competing. How about in a more informal sense? I know you grew up at Stone's Throw from the new Spurs Stadium. Were you out with your mates at all hours? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, um, playing on the streets, you know. Had my mum always calling me in, but, you know, I always wanted to be out playing with my mates. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say yeah, it probably started on the streets, but my first actual club was, was Winchmore Hill. And in terms of first dreams and, and first heroes, was pulling on the white Spurs shirt always, always the always, dream for you? Always, yeah. Um, grew up a Tottenham fan, had some friends that were Arsenal fans, so that was always a, a big like debate and rivalry on the streets. Um, but yeah, big, big Tottenham fan. Your family a few Arsenal fans, aren't there? As yeah, well? I've got a few. How, how does that work? Uh, yeah, I think when they play each other, it's always quite intense. But other than that, we're, we're quite chill. And what kind of a kid were you, Carl? Were you into your school? Was it all about football? Did you have a good balance? Um, I had a good balance. My, my parents made sure of that. My dad was very um, education comes first because, you know, you, not many people make it. You know, you have, to, you have to be really, really good and you have to work really, really hard to make it. Um, so it's always good to have that, that backup plan. And your uncle Phil was a footballer too, wasn't he? Was that a big influence for you? Is, did he push you along that route? Um, I wouldn't say he, he pushed me along the route. I think seeing someone in my family be able to make it, you know, gave me, gave me that drive, you know, to, to, to you know, go ahead and, and prove to everyone that, you know, anyone can make it. If there's one thing that sticks in the mind about what he taught you or a bit of advice he gave you when you were a young lad, what would that be? Play free, um, you know. Don't don't let uh, society almost like build the way you play. You know, play how you want to play and play free and and just enjoy your football. And at what stage? I know you joined Spurs at ten, I think it was. At what stage did you think to yourself, or did someone say to you, you know, Carl, you, you've got a good chance here, and and this could be your life, a professional footballer? Um. You know, my, my dad always always spoke to me about the opportunity I had being at Tottenham, you know, to never take it for granted. But it's not until, you know, around 16, 17, 18, where you start to notice, hold on a second, I can, I can actually go all the way here. I think, you know, when you're young, you don't want to think about that too much. You want to, like I said, just enjoy your football and, and be playing freely, you know, no pressure. Um, but yeah, I'd say around 16, 17, it started to really you know, ramp up mm. in terms of what, what could be done. And before that, when, when you were 10 and, and you joined the Spurs Academy, was that, I mean, what was that like for a, a young lad who um, dreamt about that kind of thing all his life? Or did it still feel like you were a kid playing yeah, with your mates? Yeah, to be totally honest, it mm. just felt like, you know, I was still a kid just playing with my mates, but obviously playing with mates that were better, you know, higher quality. Um, so yeah, just, just the usual for me. And you, you seem like a, a really laid back guy, but I guess there comes a stage some point when you're um, at a place like Tottenham and there are high quality players around you where you have to develop more of a ruthless streak where you have to think you know there's not a lot of us who are going to make it through here did that come and, and how did that come um yeah I, I've always had that that inside me you know um I try to do it in a fair way you know I'm not going around smashing people <laughs> um but just in terms of like improving my quality um I think like things like end product and like crossing, those were the things that, you know, when I when I was training with people like Kieran Trippier or Kyle Walker, you know, seeing their end product and their quality, I knew to get to that level, that's what I had to improve. You know, I was always comfortable on the ball, always quite confident. Um, so yeah, when 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 making that step up and seeing 
how good everyone was, um, that, that really stood out and that made me really think I need to improve certain things. And you know, you just mentioned two of the best right backs to play for England in the last decade. Out of those two guys, was one of them more than the other, more influential for you? Did you ever think, wow, I've got to get past these these two first? Uh, I spent more time with Kieran Trippier. I think uh, I was slightly younger when Carl Walker was playing. Um, so I'd, I'd say in terms of helping me improve and, and influencing me, I'd say Kieran Trippier had a had a massive, massive part in that. Um, and yeah, he still speaks to me now. So it's always it's always nice to have someone that you look up to, you know, mm. speak to you and give you advice. And you know, you, as a young player, you always take it on. And during those years, you know, the, the formative years before even scholarships, did you ever doubt yourself and think, I don't know if I'm going to make it here? Um, yeah, I did actually. Um, although I said I was uh, I was quite I've always been quite confident. There was a stage in my in my Tottenham career where I fractured my fibula. Um, I believe I was about 12 years old and when you're young you know they they take the rehab quite slow uh, they don't want to rush you back you know you don't want to be doing that again uh, as a 12 13 year old um, so yeah it was it was really tough for me I think the toughest thing wasn't the rehab wasn't wasn't all the running and all the gym the toughest thing was seeing my friends and, and my teammates improve and go through, you know, I'd say, I, I think I missed my whole under 12 age group, you know, and then, and then coming back as an under 13, you know, I was almost a year behind. So I felt like I was playing catch up and, mm. you know, it almost felt, <laughs> felt impossible. It, it, it really was hard, but, you know, I had a great, great support with, with my family. Um, and, you know, gradually began to build my confidence up. And I wouldn't say, honestly, I wouldn't say until under 15s where I really started to kick on again and, and really get that confidence. So to anyone that's watching, if, if that does happen to you, you know, you can, you can, still, mm. you can still bounce back. That's a great story. And, and when you're 12, 13, you know, all sorts of things are going on in your life. You're yeah. developing as a, you're turning from a boy into a man, um, physically, emotionally, so psychologically as well, that must've been a real, a real challenge for you. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was yeah. so tough. Um, so tough, but like I said, I had my family around me, which, which always made it a bit easier, you know. Uh, and yeah, here I am, here I am today. So here you are, yeah. exa exactly. And and you, you know, graduated through the Tottenham age groups, um, played the most games in the under 23s. I saw under yeah. Ugu Ekiog out of any other player. I just want to ask you about about that time. How important? I know you were very close to him. How important was he for you as a person and a player? Uh. Um, yeah, massive, mm. massive. We uh, clashed a lot. <laughs> we we did clash a lot. Um, sometimes we'd we'd really go at each other, but I think that was important. You know, I I almost looked at him as a bit of a father figure at the training ground. You know, so although I clashed with him, I always took on his advice. He always made sure I was I was confident, and he he kept me in check, which which was good. You know, you don't you don't want to get too ahead of yourself you know I was probably one of the top top players in my age group you know playing for England um, but he made sure I kept a level head and and if I wasn't good enough he he definitely told me so <laughs> can you remember one incident that sums up your relationship yeah there was there was, <laughs> there was one but I can't use the, I can't use the language <laughs> and and Carl you know three and a half years now since his tragic death I noticed you still have his picture as your Twitter handle he clearly still has a big influence on you. Um, can you try and explain how and, and, and as your coach at the time, what impact he had on you? Um, yeah, a, a massive impact. Uh, you know, the, the, the main thing that stands out for me is that he told me I would be a Premier League footballer. Um, he told me I had the quality. He told me I had, you know, the intelligence. Um, but like I said previously, you know, he did keep me in check. And, and he always told me when I wasn't good enough. So there's things that he told me that I think about before going into every game. Um, so yeah, that, that's why I, I, I still have him as my banner. And, and yeah, I'll probably keep it there for the whole of my career. Um, and yeah, just forever grateful to, to all the, for all the advice he gave me. Yeah, and going back to that time, it was a crazy time for you because barely a month after Ugo tragically passed, you 
went off to the World Cup with England, the under 20s, won the tournament. I mean, what a fantastic team that was. And then less than two months after that, you made your Premier League debut. I mean, looking back now and trying to remember what it was like at the time, how was that for a 20 year old Carl Walker Peters who had never experienced anything like that before? Um, well, firstly, the World Cup was, was incredible. Um, actually mentally quite tough being away for, from home for, for five weeks. Even though you were with your mates, you know, it got to a point where it was like, you know, you just want to get to the final and, and, and try and win it. Um, we managed to do that, you know, every, everyone stayed focused and, and, and that was incredible. Um, off the back of that tournament, um, I, I think I went straight back to the first team, uh, straight on pre-season with the first team. Um, that was a really tough pre-season. We played some top teams. Um, yeah, and, and Pochettino was, was on to me, you know, he was making sure I was working hard. Um, you know, just like Hugo, identifying everything I needed to work on, you know. I didn't come back from the World Cup with a, you know, a big head and thinking I'm going to go straight into the first team. And actually, to, to get my debut, like what happens a lot of the time, I, I was quite lucky. Um, we played Juventus in a pre-season friendly the week before Newcastle and Kieran Trippier got injured just before half time and I remember Pochettino you know turning around to me and telling me to get ready I was actually very nervous <laughs> um, yeah and then I played really well in that game for the 45 minutes I was on the pitch and then the build up during that week I didn't I didn't think too much about it so you knew at that point that you were going to start? Or? I, I wasn't sure, you know, there was, you know, as you see in the media, can Musa Sissoko play right back or can other players play right back, you know? So, you know, I, I kept it in the back of the mind that it was a, it was a possibility, but I didn't get too ahead of myself. And the day before, uh, Pochettino named a team and, and I was in it. Yeah, again, nerve wracking. <laughs> Yeah. And tell us about the day itself, because I'm sure, you know, emotions were swirling around, but is there any one little thing that you can pinpoint that you remember? Could be anything, a face in the crowd or something that happened to you before the game? Um, so in, in the tunnel, the tunnel's quite tight at, at St. James's Park. I remember John Joe Shelby, I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure it was him saying, oh, put it on his head from kickoff. And I'm guessing, you know, as they've done all their their uh, prep for the game, they've said, you know, it's his first start, and you know, you know, straight away, kick off, back to Shelby, straight on my head. <laughs> um, I actually won the header, and that that gave me massive confidence. Um, and then from there, yeah, I went on to to actually play a really good game. Well, you didn't only do that. You won two nil, um, man of the match. Your dad was in the stand. You must have thought it was all easy. And what's the fuss about? <laughs> No, yeah, um, still a tough game, really, really, really tough game. But yeah, I was, I was, I was so happy to get get the man of the match. And then when I went back in the dressing room, you know, the whole team made me say a speech. I was going to ask you yeah, about that. They, they made me say a speech, which was funny. Um, what did you say? <laughs> I just said I'm, I'm grateful for for the support, you know, throughout my time in the first team, and you know, hopefully many more. And you know, from the high of that day, um, coming back, you didn't actually. Play the next yeah, game against Chelsea. W yeah, was that disappointing? Did you get told why? Or um, very disappointing. I didn't. I didn't get told why. You know that that wasn't that wasn't how Pochettino operated. You know he he saw me as a young player. Mm. I made my debut, done well, but I still had work to do. Um, and I actually think uh, Kieran Trippier was was back fit for that game. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, of course I was disappointed. But you know I stayed focused and kept working throughout that year, throughout that season, and, and tried to take any opportunity I got. Well, you took a few opportunities, and one of them I wanted to mention was Barcelona away, yeah. Champions League. Um, I imagine it's a game that you'll always remember. And always. Just tell us why, because highs, lows, I'm sure it taught you a lot in that, in that yeah. game. I'd say that is the game that has taught me most about professional football. Um, you know, I started the game so well. Like, I, it felt like a dream, to be honest, you know, walking out at the Camp Nou, you know, when you're young, you watch videos of, of Ronaldinho playing there and, and, and Danny Alves and whoever. And yeah, I started the game really well. 
really enjoying it. And then obviously I made I made that mistake where where Dembele took the ball off of me. Um, straight after that, I was on the pitch. I was thinking, just I just wanted to disappear, you know, as most people would. Um, but I had Danny Rose pick me up. Harry Kane, you're playing well. Keep going. Don't worry, we've got this. And we we were playing well as a team, so we we were quite confident. Um, and then again, you know, it was it was a situation where. I think I got the ball, I had an opportunity to win a header uh, just after making that mistake and I completely smashed the guy, won the header and then again straight away my, my confidence remained. Um, but I say I, I, I take the most from that game because now if, if I make a mistake in the game, I never let it affect me. Um, you, don't, you don't make bigger mistakes than that. So I think that was a massive learning curve for me. and. You know, you, you never want to make mistakes, but if you do make one, you want it, you want it to affect you positively. So can you also look at it the other way? And if you did hide and shrink and that mistake made you go into your shell, then you might not have... Exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, I'm, I might have had to make more mistakes to, to, to get to a point where I can make a mistake and remain uh, with the same confidence and same, you know, technical level in the game. Um, so, yeah. Although it was disappointing, it was it was a, a good learning curve. Looking back now, any regrets from Spurs? Any regrets? No regrets. Um, I gave a hundred percent the whole time I was there. I think if you if you ask Pochettino, he'll probably tell you I was I was one of the best trainers uh, for the whole time he was in charge. I think he'll tell you that. So I'm in a place where I'm really happy with my with my time there. And, and I have no regrets whatsoever. I always try and give my advice when I think the time's right. You know, sometimes players that are a bit younger than me come to me and, and ask me questions about how I coped with not playing or, you know, being on the bench so much. And, you know, I just tell them exactly how, how, I, how I coped with it. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, but looking from it from the outside, Carl Walker Peters and Southampton seems like a really good fit, and it almost was from the start when you first joined on loan. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, I've I've enjoyed my time here. I would have been there two years in January. Um, so yeah, you know, it's, it's it's another place where I'm I'm enjoying my football. I'm happy, and uh, yeah, hopefully it continues. Are you a believer that sometimes you should leave your comfort zone? Yeah, definitely. You know that that was a big thing for me. You know, um, I spoke to spoke to Mourinho before coming here, and you know he didn't force me to leave. He didn't say, you know, I don't want you. He he left it up to me. You know, he was he was really honest with me. Uh, we had a really good conversation, and you know I felt like it was time for me to leave my comfort zone and show everyone, you know, I can play back to back games and I can be a regular starter in the Premier League team and that's what I did. What did playing every week do for you and your confidence? You mentioned the run of games and prove you can do it, but did you almost have to prove to yourself that you could do it as well? Um, yeah, I think it was important to prove to myself before anybody else, and I managed to do that. So I think, I think it's important to show, first of all, yourself, but then show everyone you know, how robust you are mm. and that you can you know, cope with playing week in, week out, and sometimes having to play two games a week. Um, because that's, that's the demands of the Premier League. So, yeah, it was, it was massive, massive for me. And just looking at it, it's, it's quite the education, isn't it? Pochettino, Mourinho, and now Ralph Assenhuttle. And if you could pinpoint one thing that kind of made you think, wow, this is very different to anything I've ever been taught before, or that stood out for you, that was demanded of you when you came here, what, what would that be? Um, I'd say the, how aggressive we are when defending. So, you know, being on the jump to the winger. Don't worry about what's behind you. Go to the man and make a foul if you have to. You know, don't, don't try and injure someone, but if you have to stop someone running past you, you stop them. And, you know, doubling up on, on your opponent. That was something that was quite alien to me, actually. Um, so it took me a while to actually train my brain into doing what, exactly what Ralph wanted. And over time, I got it. and. I think I've, I've totally got it now. You certainly have, and, and 
pushing the winger up the pitch and the high press that, that you guys do so well. Um, are we likely to see a Carl Walker Peters first Premier League goal anytime soon? Yeah, and I, I need to. <laughs> um, yeah, I've had got a couple in the cup, haven't you? I've, yeah, I've got a couple in the cup. I've had some opportunities in the Prem. Um, got a few assists, but I do need to start getting on the goal sheet. Used to be attacking midfielder, didn't you? Yeah, I used to play on the wing or as like a number ten yeah, when I was when I was young. So I can definitely score goals. <laughs> and, and this season as well, interesting that. You're playing at left back instead of right back. Yeah. How was that adjustment and, and how are you finding it? Yeah, that was totally normal for me. Um, You've done I, it before? I played you? left back throughout my, my youth career. Played left back a lot for England. I actually played left back the whole tournament at the World Cup. Um, so yeah, it wasn't, wasn't anything too strange for me. And obviously we touched on your successes for England earlier in that amazing tournament. We've also touched upon the fact that there are, seems like hundreds of brilliant English right backs oh, ahead yeah. of you, but is that in your mind at all? You know, is that dream still there for you? Uh, always, always there. Um, like you said, competing with some some top top players. You've got Trent, uh, Reese James, Lamptey. I'm naming the people that are around a similar age to me. So, yeah, of course, of course, it's going to be it's going to be really tough. But it's always in the in the back of my mind. But my main focus is performing well for Southampton and. Whatever happens, happens. So still 24, Kyle, but for some reason to me, it seems like you've been around quite a long time. Do you, with a lot of young players at Southampton, do you kind of take on a bit of a, a leadership role? Do you feel like a, you know, one of the, the more experienced guys in the group? Um, yeah, I always, I always try and give my advice uh, when, when I think the time's right. You know, sometimes the players that are a bit younger, to me, younger than me come to me and, and ask me questions about how I coped with, with not playing or how I coped with, you know, being on the bench so much. And, you know, I just tell them exactly how, how, I, how I coped with it and try and pass on any knowledge I've got from, from my previous experiences or what, what a, senior would have, a senior player would have told me when I was, you know, 18, 19. And that's interesting because to a, a young Southampton player, they see you and playing at Camp Nou and yeah. World Cup experience with England through the youth levels and playing under Pochettino and Mourinho, even though you might not think it, that's, that's a... Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, it's it a big is, deal. It is, uh, it is nice when, when, they, when they do come, come to me and, and ask me questions. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, sometimes I tell them I'm still young. <laughs> I'm, I'm still learning as well. You You're know? offended. <laughs> uh, no, nah, not, not at all, but you know, there's, there's things that still frustrate me. Um, you know, and there's, I need to get better at, at you know, when, when we lose a game, I'm very, uh, very angry and very, very irritable uh, when we lose. So I don't really like to speak to anyone. Um, how long does that last? It depends. Depends on the result, depends on how I played. But yeah, I think it's something I need, I need to get better at. So there's things there's things all of us, all of us, even the senior, senior players uh, can improve on. But yeah, like I said, I always try and pass on, pass on my advice. And in your own words, um, how would you describe the identity of this side? What sets you apart if, if there was a way of explaining how you try and play the game? I'd say how aggressive and how high energy we are. And that's why I talk about getting more assists and scoring more goals because, you know, I'm always at the back post. I'm all, if, if, the right back's crossing the ball. I'm always trying to get to the far post, even as a full back. You know, that's how we set up. Um, it's exhausting sometimes. It is. You now, sometimes, you know, you make a run, you don't get the ball and you've got to run back. But sometimes you're so tired, you know, it, 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 it really is tough. But I'd say, you know, that's what that's our identity, you know, high energy, um, really aggressive when defending, when pressing. Um, so, yeah. And what's the ambition, what's, what's the dream? Short term this season, but also bigger picture stuff and, and where you think Southampton can get to? Um, you know, after the season we had last season, you know, we started, I think I'd say the first half of the season was really, really good for us, you know. And after that first half, you know, I looked, I looked at the team and looked at where we were in the table and we were like, you know, I thought, you know, we should start, you know, fighting to be in Europe. You know, I think we're definitely good enough. 
you know, we, we showed that last season, we showed that in spells this season. Um, so yeah, that's in my head what, what I want for the club. Um, so hopefully we can, we can do that eventually. Well, we look forward to it. Um, a, a long and, and successful career ahead, I'm sure. And thank you very much. Thank you. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more. So why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.